Monday because we're here for another episode of Photography for Beginners. Today we're going to talk about making money with your photography and we're actually going to touch on not only photography but also videography in this episode because the making of an income and this is passive income it's not what you're going to support yourself on in the short term. But there are many ways to make money with photography and to build a career. So this is one of the ways that you can earn passive income. And that's where you sit back, you let the photography or the videos uh, just sell themselves in, in most regard there over time. Uh, Non-passive income would be when you are out videography or photography and you're taking images and footage of a wedding of a corporate event, of, you know, headshots, family portraits, things like that. So that would be where you're actively doing the project for a set amount and a set term. Now, the passive income that we're going to discuss here, because most people are familiar with all of the areas that you can make non-passive income with photography and videography, and that would be, as I said, weddings, family events corporate events, uh, advertising photography, product photography, food photography, fashion. There's so many ways to focus uh, in on a certain aspect of the industry. Now, a lot of people are going to take a while after starting out to find their niche, to find what area of photography is very good for their style and their interests. So you want to really try to figure that out. Don't go into wedding photography if you don't like people, if you don't have a good communication and rapport working with people, go and do something else. You can do nature photography. You can do, you know, all kinds of other things, editorial and to, to different degrees. So you want to push yourself outside of your comfort zone, but at the same time, you don't want to, make it so that your hobby of photography or your interest, your passion becomes diminished, that you, you just don't like it anymore. You want to stay focused on what is your driving passion behind the images that you're taking, because those images are going to tell the story. If you want a good story, you want to be passionate about what you're doing. Now, Let's take a look again. Let's switch back to the passive income. There are websites out there such as Stringer, uh, Stringer's Hub, Getty Images, iStock, Shutterstock. Um, you know, just so many out there that you can upload your videos and your photos and sell them as editorial. So that would be non-creative uh, videos and images. Now, this could include car accident, uh, the war in Ukraine, I've covered that, uh, the refugee crisis in Europe, the uh, freedom convoy in Canada. You know, these are areas that I've worked and I've captured images and videos in which I've uploaded to the different sites, you know, such as Pond5 and the others that I've mentioned, and they create a passive income. People will go on there from news agencies and media outlets that need content for their story. They buy a license from the website, the service provider, who collects the money on my behalf. They take their royalty or their commission and I get paid the balance. Very easy. I don't have to do a lot of work with it. I upload it, I leave it and the People find it through those sites because that's what they're looking for. They're going to Stringer and Stringer's Hub, uh, Getty Images, because they need editorial content. Now, the other side of it is the creative content. And that doesn't just mean that you are creating uh, the scene or the product or the image itself. You can be capturing wildlife, animals, cityscapes, landscapes, where you don't have control over the actual content or subject of the images or the videos, but you do have the creative control when it comes to lighting, angles, uh, perspective, 
What story are you trying to tell? What kind of a mood are you trying to set? What is the composition of the image or the framing? So those are more creative end. Now, something to keep in mind when you're going with the editorial part is that if you're going video for editorial, you want to go in a landscape mode. This allows the TV shows or whatever the content uh, producer is looking for, they are able to fill the screen. Something that you'll notice on news reports, when they're using people's general footage from cell phone coverage, a lot of time they will have this much image on the screen. And that's because the person that was filming that footage has captured it in a portrait mode, not landscape. So therefore, you've got the image here and the rest of the screen going to the edges is blurred. Now, you can still get a good idea of what's going on in the image or the video when it's on a large screen. But this makes it more difficult on a smaller screen such as your cell phone when you're streaming through uh, TikTok and Instagram or Facebook and you're trying to see the news report and it's already been reduced this much. So you want to go landscape on your videos if you're looking to market them to that part of the industry. Now, if you are only and specifically taking photos and videos that you want to share on TikTok, of course, landscape might not be the right setting for you. You may want to go portrait because that is the screen setting of that particular platform for sharing. And so you want to look at these different aspects. Now, Making money, again, it's an easy process of uploading and then you'll tag, you'll add descriptions, you'll do all of this for the different files. Now, it can be time consuming if you are doing a large batch of files at any given uh, time. But if you keep up on all of your digital asset management, which we'll cover in another video, which is going to be very important and we will be doing that one in the next week or two. Now, the asset management allows you to set all of your tags and everything else through. For myself, I like the Adobe suite of products. I use Photoshop, I use Lightbox, I use uh, Premiere and, you know, After Effects, so forth. But use whatever program that you're comfortable with. If you're not currently using a program, of course, I would recommend Adobe because that's the products not only that I utilize, but back when I was teaching desktop publishing and multimedia for the school districts for corporate and, uh, and adult courses, those are the ones that we were teaching at a professional level, and that's what we recommended using. And so let's again just dive back here and... When you're looking at selling creative footage that's of non-editorial content, you can look at other sites such as, again, Shutterstock has creative, uh, iStock, you can go to, um, you know, all, all different sites and media outlets that are out there in the platforms. And again, they will sell the license and you can be exclusive with one platform Personally, I do not do exclusivity at this point. I am distributing to different platforms, so I'm not exclusive with any particular one. The benefit to being exclusive is that you get more in terms of the uh, per video or per license cost. So when a client on Pond5 buys a certain file at a set price, you get a higher percentage of that in your pocket. The downside, of course, is that now you could be licensing it non-exclusively to Pond5, but also selling non-exclusive licenses to uh, other sites, such as I said, you know, Getty and Stringer and all of these other ones. So take a look and don't necessarily sign up right away for exclusivity with one particular platform. Take your time and find out which ones are distributing and making you money. 